When I went to start playing Strangerville rotationally for my new Let's Play, I immediately hit a snag. I had decided that the Roswells should be the first family played, which I believe was the first mistake since their role in the story of Strangerville is more reactionary. They need people to try to bring the secret to light so they can try to hide it. However, actually playing them as a family was the hardest thing. The house was too large for routing to work, and since I had added two Pomeranians, Merlot and Martini, to the family, it was almost impossible to actually care for them in a house of that size. Dogs are very buggy in The Sims 4 anyway, so to have even more bugs on top of that was too much. So I decided to delete the save file and rebuild the Roswell's house in my lore makeover save before beginning again. I wanted to keep the southern feel of it with the big wraparound porch, the large garden, the gables, and the overall grand feeling while making it much smaller and easier to play in. Chimneys on either end is an indicator of early southern colonial homes, which was an influence I wanted to bring in. I was initially trying to limit packs to just Strangerville, but I eventually gave up on that since I wanted to add several packs and custom content, and it's my personal save file anyway. There were important bits of lore to save from the original house as well. Ted's strange little office, the kids' beds and desk, and so on. I also wanted to make sure to give Meredith knitting and cross-stitching, since she's a true southern lady and needs her crafting supplies. I amped up the entire thing by trying to emphasize that the Roswells had a family that they might have just forgotten due to the influence of the Strangerville mystery, or who moved away as a result of Ted's poor behavior. Ted's office got creepier as well, though I am also dying to put a basement in again at some point for him to imprison people if need be. Not that the mayor of Strangerville would ever do such a thing. Playing rotationally, it's beneficial to add several different gameplay items for more realistic play. Adding depth and difficulty is incredibly important when playing an entire world like this, and there's several gameplay items and lot traits that allow you to do so. The first thing that I do is I add the lot challenges Reduce and Recycle and Filthy. I will usually, but not always, add Simple Living as well. For all residential lots, I give them vacuums, usually one per sim as well as one to serve as decor in the house. A washer and dryer, hampers, a coat rack, a shoe rack, an umbrella stand, and a thermostat. Also, depending on the neighborhood, I will either have to completely rebuild their house, like I did for the Roswells in Strangerville or the Roomies in Oasis Springs, or I may just adjust the furniture layout and recolor the items to make it more cohesive, like I did with the pancakes in Willow Creek. It's also important to know when not to do this for story purposes. Johnny Zest, for example, has absolutely terrible mismatched furniture. But that's supposed to be because when he was kicked out of the land grab house, he grabbed whatever he could as he went and had to scrounge the rest. For commercial lots, this depends on how many lots I have available in the world. I like to add a laundromat, library, restaurant, bar, community pool, and so on. But in worlds like Strangerville, there just aren't enough lots available, so I have to prioritize. Strangerville already has a library and bar, so I remodeled those a bit. I try to make sure that all libraries have a children's room, and that every commercial lot possible has potties for toddlers and dumpsters for divers. I will generally add paper towels and soap dispensers from Get to Work if I remember to do so. If I can, I'll also add closets from Get Together. Since Strangerville lots were limited, I added a park with an open air market so my Sims can go grocery shopping if need be and so that the children have somewhere to go and play. Once you have the world and the Sims ready, you have to decide the order you want to play the households in. Playing the Roswells first didn't work well, 
because there was no one yet trying to muck up their perfect world. I also intend to play Erwin Prize, but will have to play him last since he has a role to play as an NPC before that. When I'm playing an entirely original, integrated neighborhood, I will usually start with business owners so that they have time to get stock on the shelves for the rest of the neighborhood. However, in the case of Strangerville and the other Maxis playables, it's usually best to go for maximum drama. So to that end, I decided on the revised play order of the Eclectic Arts House, the Sigworths, the Roswell's daughter Allison June and her son Teddy, George Cahill, Michael Batchelor, Erwin Prize, and finally the Roswells. If anything comes up while playing that necessitates me changing the order, I'll do that then. Game settings are also an important part of setting up the neighborhood. I turn off empty house move-in and automatic naps. Autonomy is on, and I set seasons to two weeks and lifespan to normal for a greater sense of progression. Importantly, I also turn off aging for everyone but the played house. There are ways to play with story progression on for unplayed households, but I personally find it difficult to remember when to turn aging off and on for this method, so I like it better when it's a more Sims 2 style and no one ages unless I play them. I also play with a modified normal lifespan, which I do through MC Command Center. This allows me to keep track of approximate ages. I'm doing this instead of my standard one year equals one day in-game method to let me spend a bit longer with teens and children. Of this, the most notable part is that I add seven days to the young adult lifespan to allow for them to go to college, as I have a mod that allows college to be completed in one week. I will add a link to that in the description box below. I also double the age span for elders since 10 days is not enough time by any means. There are a few more things I do regarding setting up the individual households, like giving college degrees, jobs, setting skills, starting clubs, and so on, but this is the basics of what I do to set up the world itself. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I am going to be playing Strangerville rotationally with new videos posted Fridays starting soon, so make sure you subscribe for more rotational Sims 4 content. As always, thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day. Bye!